All right, it's time to take the plunge into the world of pinball on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. In this video, we'll take a quick look at all seven pinball games on the system in ascending order of awesomeness. If you like pinball, all of these are fun in their own way, but we'll start with the one that requires the player to do most of the heavy lifting, Virtual Pinball. Released in 1993 by Electronic Arts, this is a Genesis exclusive follow-up to Pinball Construction Set, created 10 years prior. While the new title doesn't sound very DIY, the main highlight here is the ability to design your own pinball boards with 256 parts to choose from and a variety of aesthetic options. There are a bunch of pre-made tables to play with as well, but it's hard to feel motivated to get high scores on what basically amounts to templates and examples. If you're the creative type, you might have some fun making a table of your very own. But obviously, 30 years later, there are far more robust options for this sort of endeavor. Next up, we have Psycho Pinball, published by Codemasters in Europe in 1994. Here we have a somewhat more traditional pinball experience in a similar vein to Pinball Dreams, with the four themed tables Wild West, Trick or Treat, The Abyss, and Psycho. Psycho is somewhat unique from the others in that you can transport yourself to the other three tables during a run. Other than that and a handful of arcade minigames, there isn't anything too special to get excited about here. The physics and game feel aren't too bad, but I find the tightly zoomed in view to be a real drag for aiming your shots and especially for handling multiballs. Now let's get a little more outlandish with Dino Land, developed by Wolf Team and published by Renovation in 1991. Here you are a cute little armadillo-like creature on a quest to save your girlfriend with three different areas to travel to, lots of dinosaurs to bounce off of, big old bosses to battle with, and of course, copious amounts of prehistoric slots. Being the earliest release of the bunch here, I can't help saying that this one feels a little bit primitive. It's a rather choppy and clunky experience overall, and you're generally stuck in this somewhat tedious starting area for the majority of a run, unless you can get the slot machine to cooperate. But it's still a pretty fun and challenging adventure that goes beyond what a typical pinball is capable of. And it's time to jam out with Crewball, published by EA in 1992, developed by New FX. Originally called Twisted Flipper, the Motley Crew license was slapped on here, including three of their glam rock anthems, along with their adorable mascot. But once you're playing, there isn't much of a connection. You do get a fast and frantic experience with a three-tiered playing field spread out over nine different decibel levels and some bonus minigames. With game design by Mark Springer, maker of real tables like High Speed, and music by Brian Schmidt, who also scored many Williams, Data East, and Sega pinball tables, there does feel to be a bit more attention to a smooth game feel here. The physics can certainly get a bit rambunctious sometimes, but I think the rowdy nature of the gameplay fits pretty well with the coke fueled vibes. And overall, I'd say Crew Ball feels good. <laughs> I live. Now things get a little weird with this one. This is Dragon's Revenge, the 1993 Tengen made fever dream of a follow up to Dragon's Fury. Here you'll embark on an epic quest to rescue the captive heroes, battle a dragon, and defeat the evil Darzel, with a decently spread out playfield and a nice variety of boss fights. And I'll come right out and say it here, this game is a hot mess of jank. But beneath the unhinged physics and deranged hit detection, I still find this game to be an immensely entertaining time. As if you were chaotically bouncing around the inside of a sketchbook of a D&D &D enthusiast fresh out of high school. It can't hold a candle to its inspiration, but I still recommend to give this one a shot. Huh? Oh. <laughs> 
Sonic the Hedgehog may be one of the few well-known game mascots where it actually makes perfect sense to flip the script and drop him into a pinball table. And Sega gave it a valiant effort with Sonic Spinball in 1993, developed by Sega Technical Institute. Nestled somewhat uncomfortably between a platformer and a pinball game, you have to guide Sonic to collecting Chaos Emeralds through four different expansive stages, culminating in a showdown with Robotnik himself. Combining these two genres was pretty commendable for the time, but your mileage may vary with what you think of the play control. Beyond controlling the flippers, you'll also have some say in Sonic's movement, as you navigate through each stage and figure out the path to every emerald required to face off with a boss. The difficulty can be rather brutal as well, but finally clearing this game is pretty satisfying if you can pull it off. And to me, Sonic Spinball remains to be one of the most unique experiences in video pinball games over all consoles. And sitting pretty here at the top, it's Dragon's Fury. Released for the Genesis in 1992, this is Technosoft's port of Devil's Crush, which was originally released for the Turbo Graphics in 1990. The second game of the Crush pinball series features a three-tiered playfield with a demonic medieval setting, chock full of skeletons and monsters to bop, and bonus rooms to clear. Beyond going for high scores, you can also make your way to a final boss battle and solidify your reputation as a true pinball wizard. Being that this is my favorite video pinball game of all time, I could probably gush on it for hours, but I'll abbreviate my feelings a bit for this list. The game feels absolutely great to play, I love the aesthetic and the music, and the brutal difficulty keeps me coming back again and again. It's hard to say whether I prefer the TG16 version or not, as the differences between the two are very slight and you can't go wrong with either one. But whatever way you play it, this is the pinnacle of video game pinball. And before we wrap up, I did want to give an honorable mention here. It's more of a breakout kind of thing, but definitely check out Devilish. You control two paddles to bounce your ball through all sorts of cool stages and boss battles. It's almost like an Arkanoid meets Devil's Crush kind of vibe. It's worth a look for sure. And thanks for checking out this list, and until next time, watch out for those outlanes.